Have you ever wondered how a market for Leicas or Phase 1 cameras exists? Where do all these celebrity status photographers come from and how can I get a piece? I'm gonna give you seven unconventional ways I personally used to make money in the last 10 years of my career so that you can propel yours, your personal wealth, and your knowledge of all things photography business. So here's a list of what we're gonna cover. And if you think that I left out anything by the end that you implement into your own workflow, please let the others know in this community down below so that we can all be successful business owners or hobbyists with some extra cash. So first thing, don't be too snobby to assist. The classic photography template has always been to assist until you can have your own studio and become a successful photographer. But with today's digital age, the barrier to entry is so low that there's seemingly no reason to assist when you can just do it yourself. Back 40 years ago, it was much less accessible. It was expensive and less glamorized than today. You can go to a thrift shop and pick up a DSLR for 20 bucks, watch a couple YouTube videos, and bam, you're basically me. But I think photographers, no matter what level you're at, can always benefit from assisting on larger sets. And in that same vein, do you love gear? Are you the nerdy friend that obsesses over fancy equipment and spec sheets and being a part of big productions with even bigger budgets? There's so many jobs available to you with consistent demand around photography sets that don't involve being the photographer. Sure, maybe one day you can be the head honcho and even if you are already shooting major ad campaigns, it's nice to be a helping hand on other sets rather than always being the one with all the pressure. Digitechs are a crucial component of every shoot when possible. Get paid for the gear you're already invested in and learn how others would use it in the same process. Even within a single shoot, if you're doing a focus stack, it's nice to have labels to look at. It'd let your retoucher know where you focused on for each shot and what you need for each out of each file. If you're the Digitech, you can handle that for the photographer as they're shooting. Well, dude, you're worth your weight in gold. I used to think, well, wrongfully think, why did assistants and Digitechs and grips and all that, why would they just choose to not just be the photographer? But I forgot to realize that most of them probably were. Some of them might have gone on to become full-time Digitechs because the workflow is slightly different, but most people on set are also incredible photographers. Being an assistant or a Digitech means no pressure from the client. It means knowing exactly where your day is gonna be, or well, to a certain extent. And you can take pride in just being a contracted hired hand, at least for a day. I think it's super important if you're trying to make money as a photographer that the ways you do and go make money stay synergistic with photography. So like, if you want some extra bucks, don't go garage sailing every Saturday or become a barista on the weekends, but see what bigger productions are happening in your area and keep the cash flow within photography. It'll help you stay creative and give you ideas on how other people on set might think. Oh yeah, uh, my name is Sergio, welcome or welcome back. I'm a full-time photographer slash YouTuber and not, not the, the other way, way around. around. I shoot out of a Victoria BC studio and over the last 10 years of my career, one of the most lucrative ways I've found to make money is through licensing the images I already have. If you have a catalog of images from the various spec shoots and open-ended contract gigs you've shot over the years, maybe go back and see who might get more use out of them. I've found it difficult to upsell a client that wasn't already paying usage, but a new client that doesn't have to pay for you to set up and shoot, no creative fees, well, they still get a series of images that might perfectly fit their brief, it's much more economical for them to just pay licensing. Say for example, I shoot a lot with interior designers in towns in very fancy homes. Well, those homes have custom builders, cabinet makers, landscape artists, painters, architects, appliance companies, all of which could benefit from beautiful images of their products or their services in these beautiful homes. Just because one client commissioned you to shoot an image doesn't mean another client can't get a completely different use out of it. Not that it's stock images type work, but just trying to maximize this on the shots you already have or will be taking in the future. How many non-competing clients could benefit from your work? Unless you're shooting an ad for Pepsi, definitely look into trying to license your work out to different clients. I have a video right here, here. <laughs> I have a video right here diving deep into this topic if you're interested. Next, I know it can be daunting to think about renting out your equipment. And sure, I, I, I wouldn't be giving out cameras and lenses to strangers, but Renting can also mean upselling a client. If you have a phase one camera, you can charge the rental fee of a camera like that for something you already own. Same with a studio. Just because you own your studio doesn't mean you can't charge a studio fee to the client. You're working in it just for them, so that's essentially rent renting. And I've often rented out grip and backgrounds and little things that I don't often use and it's rarely come to bite me in the ass. If you have gear that's sitting in a corner and someone needs a huge softbox for their upcoming shoot, 
They'd probably rather spend 50 bucks for yours so that they can get the job done than buying a $300 brawly just for one shoot. If you have insurance on your gear, which I think you all should, especially if you travel or even just work consistently as a photographer, but yeah, if you, you have insurance, just rent your stuff out. Photography is not a job, it's a, it's a life. It's a labor of love. So any ways that you can find to make money with photography just allows you to keep doing it for longer. Try not to be greedy. What's your end goal out of this? You, don't, you love shooting, right? So don't look for 100K jobs to save you from your 100K life. It doesn't happen like that, at least not often. But what is that 100K salary really costing you? Probably a little bit of peace of mind, right? I think the more ways we can maximize making money within the photography realm, the more we can prioritize our well-being because everything is synergistic. It all builds on each other. You've put in a lot of work to understand what you understand and love what you love. And this field of photography is so vast and ever-growing that there's always someone that's just a few years behind you. Collect your thoughts and consider giving one-to-one -one lessons to your friend's little brother, or sign up with your local community center for something more communal, or even maybe write a couple scripts and try your hand out at YouTube like me. The process of storytelling and teaching what you've already learned only helps further the craft you're already working on. This analogy might only work for me, but I never understood math or science as well as I did when I would try to answer questions that my friends had about why a certain process works a certain way or this equation leads to these answers. It was by repeating what I knew to them that was reteaching me what I already knew and helping me see the same problem from their perspective. Whether it's YouTube or teaching in person, Remaining in the photography field will help you further your photography more than you might think. At least more than I did. If the freelance life is less for you, maybe get a job. The museums in your city have replication photographers. Every newspaper has journalists. School boards and colleges always need lifestyle images. It may not always be the most exciting stuff, but it is consistent and it keeps you with a camera in your hands. That's, that's the goal, right? I think we all like to glamorize the busy freelance life, but Shooting consistently is the common denominator, isn't it? Think of your art as a service and who could benefit from it. Look in your neighborhood, the mom and pops and not the Pepsis and Cokes. Only the budget changes, but everywhere you see a photo, every Instagram post, those were all commissioned at some point. Put yourself at the right place at the right time and make connections with the people booking those shoots, not with other photographers who are trying to compare who has the biggest lens. And another pivotal moment in my career was allowing myself to do more free work. Really, uh, make money by doing stuff for free. Most of my clients have always come from doing spec work or favors for friends who their network of people saw and then snowballed into more and more business for me. I talk a bit about this in my Matthews Effect video, how to make the connections you need to break from your socioeconomic circle. We'll right over here, check it out here, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace. There's literally just one.